I'm uh, pleased to be joined by John Williams, the president of the New York Federal Reserve Bank, which is really on the front lines of a lot of the Fed's response, doing the buying and the selling uh, and managing a lot of these programs. Uh, good morning, President Williams. Good morning, Steve. Um, I'm going to start out in a way that was different from how I thought, because this morning, John, there's a uh, there's an air of optimism in the air. The market's up. The president's announcing a plan to open the economy. There's a new drug that everybody's excited about. I'm wondering from an economic point of view, as you look ahead, do you share that optimism now? Are things looking better than you'd originally forecast? Well, this is a, fa a rapidly evolving situation and every day there's new developments and we try, you know, we obviously stay on top of that. I still think, you know, we have a lot of economic pain that we're experiencing today and that's likely to continue for some time as these necessary uh, measures that have been taken to limit the spread of the coronavirus uh, continue to hold down the economy. So although I'm hopeful about uh, the eventual uh, bounce back to the economy and the recovery and getting the economy back to full strength, I still think we've got some uh, tough days ahead. And that's why we're working uh, so hard to support the economy during this difficult period. I want to get to those in a minute, but I, and now I'm going to start where I was normally going to start, which was yesterday's jobless claims number cumulative john of 22 and a half million over the past several weeks since march 7th um and i don't think that's the surprise or or really <clears throat> different from what was expected but i'm wondering how much when you look at those numbers do you believe are temporary and can come back very quickly and what are you thinking about in terms of lasting damage to the economy from this shutdown right and that's you know, those are the critical questions. Right now, we are seeing the immediate effect of the uh, restrictions and social distancing that have uh, been put into place, and that's you know shutting down whole seg uh, sectors of the economy. Obviously, hospitality, travel, uh, retail, a lot of areas of the economy have uh, essentially uh, shut down in, in recent weeks, and that's why we're seeing the enormous increase in, in unemployment, declines in employment, and, and declines in, um, in income. And so I think that is, uh, like you said, uh, the predictable part of this. Uh, in terms of uh, looking looking ahead, uh, you know, we're we're watching the data very carefully, using a lot of big data and other na analytics, and not coming to any firm conclusions about how long this will last. Uh, and we're acting uh, in every way we can and doing our utmost to support the economy. However, however, this uh, uh, evolves over the next uh, few months. In terms of lasting damage, I think. You know, that's a key, a critical question. One of the things that you know we're hearing a lot from uh, business contacts, leaders in the community, is our concerns that you know even as the pandemic uh, passes, even as the restrictions are are relaxed uh, gradually over time, uh, people may take it may take uh, quite a while before they're willing to get back on airplanes or trains or go to go to the theater uh, or go to concerts and things like that. So I think there are some risks that it takes longer to get that uh, recovery uh, for the economy uh, than just what happens in terms of the formal uh, restrictions that are in place. Uh, one of the things that you know, we're very focused on is making sure that businesses and, and households can get through this period. And that's what really our programs are about, is making sure that credit is flowing and making sure that otherwise healthy businesses uh, can get through this period and be in a good position that once the restrictions are lifted, once the pandemic's over, they can start their businesses up as fast as possible and get the economy back to full strength. John, Wall Street has a pretty good consensus on a, an atrocious second quarter, but a strong rebound in the third quarter. Is that your base case? Well, definitely we're seeing, you know, horrible data for the second quarter. Is, is we're always seeing that data, obviously, in retail sales and to, in employment and other indicators. So that's that, that I agree with. Uh, in terms of a, a bounce back, I do think that as uh, we see uh, when restrictions are uh, relaxed uh, gradually over time, uh, based on what's happening uh, with the coronavirus, uh, we will see a return to certain uh, sectors of the economy. In particular, I see construction, which has been hit really hard and is very important, obviously, for our economy here in New York. Uh, I expect that to be able to bounce back a bit uh, uh, more quickly than maybe some of the other sectors, but I don't see the economy being back to full strength uh, by the end of the year. Or, or you know, it's going to take longer to get uh, us back to where we want want to be. 
So let's talk about some of the programs you have in place. The immediate uh, concerns of the Federal Reserve were the Treasury market and the mortgage market uh, and, and some of the overnight credit markets. Do you feel like those have calmed down? Do you feel like you have a handle on them to the extent where they're functioning more normally now? Well, that is, you're right. That is where we started because uh, when the pandemic really started to spread uh, and you know, market participants uh, were you know, getting more uh, concerned about the economic impact and the uncertainty about that, we saw that enormous uh, tidal wave of uh, money moving from riskier assets and from around the globe uh, into shorter term safe assets. And the financial system, in a way, was overwhelmed by that uh, flow of money. And that's, and that's why we saw the illiquidity and uh, some uh, market functioning issues. And the, what's really the cornerstone of the global financial system, that's the U.S. Treasury securities market. And that's where we intervene uh, most quickly uh, and at an enormous scale in terms of our buying of U.S. Treasury securities, mortgage-backed securities, and agency uh, commercial mortgage-backed securities. That was our initial uh, where we saw signs of uh, uh, concern, and we acted promptly and decisively, and we have seen significant improvement in liquidity and market functioning in those critical sectors. And, and you know, with, in my view, is if you don't get those healthy, then it's impossible to make sure that credit is flowing more generally. So that's where we were uh, focused initially. I think those efforts were have been successful. We're still uh, purchasing, but uh, as you you know, as you've seen, we've cut back on the purchases because we've seen improvement in those markets. So we're seeing liquidity and functioning uh, improving there. We're also seeing that spill over into these other markets, you know, whether it's a money market, mutual funds, or, or commercial paper, and and even corporate uh, uh, bond market. So you know, now that we've seen, I think, a, a return to uh, uh, you know more stable and better functioning core uh, financial markets, that's helping uh, all the markets. I think function better. Of course, we've got other programs I'm sure you'll ask about that really are to support yeah. that and to support credit. <clears throat> John, I want to talk about those other programs. There's two in particular uh, that have uh, raised some criticism of the, uh, about the Federal Reserve. The first one is the Main Street Lending Program, an editorial in the journal today, actually two editorials in the journal today, that criticize the Federal Reserve for being too tough, really, on the people who are borrowing, not having enough money, not taking enough risk with the Treasury's money, uh, and, of course, involving the banks, and it's going to be too slow to get up and running. What are your uh, responses to that? Well, I do see the Main Street program as really an essential part of our approach at the Federal Reserve, working with the U.S. Treasury on providing support for the economy and making sure that credit is flowing especially to small and medium-sized businesses. I think it complements the uh, CARES Act, uh, SBA, PPP uh, program, and obviously it complements our efforts at more broad, broader market functioning and functioning in terms of uh, uh, the large uh, business uh, markets like the corporate bond market. Uh, you know, we are very focused at the Federal Reserve on making sure that this program gets uh, money, uh, gets credit flowing uh, immediate as soon as possible. Uh, that it's hitting the businesses that need it the most uh, and really is done at a scale uh, that addresses the, uh, the, the issues that businesses across the country are facing and will face over the next few months. Now, clearly, we made an initial announcement at the Federal Reserve around the, uh, the, this program. Uh, we all, the Federal Reserve also asked for comments on that. We're getting a lot of feedback and uh, uh, comments from a, a, a variety of stakeholders, businesses, nonprofits. Um, and banks uh, to help us uh, make that uh, program as effective as possible. And uh, we're committed to getting this uh, right and, co and committed to getting this out in, into the market uh, as soon as, as we can. John, thanks for joining us this morning. John Williams, the president of the New York Federal Reserve Bank.